there is no other way I would have been removed from Kenya if I was uh, not unconscious. Um, these people came, there were probably more than 100, and about 40 or 50 of them came, broke into the room, uh, the toilet where I was being held, wrestled me to the ground, held me there with the Somali-looking police officer that was at the main uh, JKI arrival center, ordering them to get the veins and inject me. They injected, injected me on both soles of my feet, both hands, the left hand, I think they put IV because it's still very swollen, and saw both sides of my ribs. Of my ribs. And uh, uh, I mean, and nothing has happened in terms of medical tests, toxicology tests, and any kind of medication. What I did receive when I arrived uh, was a first aid at the arrivals area. It was just a painkiller that was injected, um, uh, that I got an injection of a painkiller. The condition so therefore is dire because these chemicals are still in my body and uh, there has been absolutely no medical intervention to be, be able to address them. Uh, the treatment I received was barbaric, it was primitive, it was tyr tyrannical, and it is the kind of behavior that only rogue uh, despotic states uh, engage in, and that is what Uhuru Kenyatta, William Ruto, and the Jubilee government did. Miguna, Dr. Miguna, are you still at the Dubai International Airport? Yes, I am. Earlier on, on your social media platforms, uh, you described uh, um, Arab police officers breaking into your room. Talk to us about that. Um, in the morning, I was supposed to um, meet with and speak with a consular official from the Canadian um, consulate in Dubai. And uh, suddenly there was no communication because uh, the Dubai police uh, refused to allow her to get into the airport to see me and cut off, you know, my calls and calls in. Um, they also um, tried, or somebody tried to get into my room from an adjacent room. I could hear somebody trying to force the, the door open. I called the reception and they were able to get the guy out, but I don't know what the guy looks like. Um, that raised uh, my concern uh, because when I requested for medical attention and said I needed a toxicologist, they sent paramedics. And then the second time, they sent somebody who claimed that he was a psychiatrist. And when I asked him for his medical card or proof that he was a doctor, he could not produce it. And the guy that he was with said that he was a nurse. And when I asked for proof that he was a nurse, he could not produce it. They had absolutely no identity, no card, no um, identity whatsoever, no professional credentials. So at that point, I raised an alarm. Fortunately, a senior officer came and was able to address the issue. He confirmed everything I said, and the, luckily, the staff at the reception confirmed that they had been told not to allow anybody to call me or me to call out, and that they had stopped the consular from calling me and stopped me from calling the consular, and that somebody had actually been in the room trying to get in, and that there is a door that connects the room where I was to the adjacent room. From what you describe, seemingly you, um, you say um, it's very hard to trust anyone. So then, what is your next course of action? Are you exploring going back to Canada or coming back to Kenya? You know, Akis, I don't think that is true, that it is hard to trust anyone. I'm talking with you, and I don't think I said I distrust you. There is nothing you've done to me. My lawyers have not uh, done anything to me. So, of course, I trust them. I trust my family. I trust members of the NRM that came to demonstrate in support of me. I trust a lot of people. But then there is a few people, click, that believe that they are entitled to leadership and nobody should criticize them, nobody should threaten their legitimate uh, usurpation of power. And this is the elite, not everybody. The single, you know, entitled elite, the rapacious elite that is looting everything and, and, and reducing Kenya into a banana republic that is determined to barbarically, you know, uh, violate my rights and disobey numerous court orders. Akiza, I'm a Kenyan. 
I'm a Kenyan by birth. I, I know where I was born. I know where my placenta was buried. It is in Magina Village, in Kano Plain, in Kisumu County. It is common knowledge that I went to schools in Kenya up to university. It is common knowledge that I only left Kenya when I fled into exile after being abducted and detained in Comunicado for more than two weeks at the Nyayo what, September. What options are you going to explore now, given the situation you you're in? This because it's important that people understand that my citizenship is not in question. The court of law has more than ten times affirmed that. The court of law has said that the so-called authorities should give me back my valid Kenyan passport. They have also said that they set aside the courts, have set aside the decision purportedly cancelling my citizenship. And today or yesterday, I saw the so-called president in Mozambique saying Mozambicans can come to Kenya without a visa. They also waived the requirement of visas from Western countries. But they insist that a Kenyan citizen like me must get a visa so that I can't work, I can't earn a living, I can't engage in politics, I can't lead the NRM, I can be deported any time, I can be arrested any time. There could be all manner of conditions put on my entry, yet I'm a Kenyan citizen. They are trying to limit my activities and my freedom in Kenya in violation of court orders. Is going that to Canada very important? Yes. Is going to Canada an option for you? You know, I am here against my will. I should be able to go to Canada or any other country willingly when I want to go. When President, the so-called President of Jubilee went to Mozambique, I did not force him to go there. He went there willingly. I should, you know, the Constitution says a Kenyan citizen is free to come in and leave Kenya freely at will, without any questions. I have had people ask, why did I use my uh, Canadian citizenship to, to enter Kenya? Because when you enter Kenya, there are three lines. Kenyan citizens, East African citizens, and the others. You go to the Kenyan citizen line, and there you are supposed to produce your Kenyan citizenship record, whether it is ID, whether it is a passport. It does not vest citizenship. It is just verification of his citizenship. That's where I went, and, that, and I approved that I was a Kenyan citizen. Everybody knows that I'm a Kenyan citizen, but they still stop me from coming. And yes. in any event, in any event, the court already said ten times that Meguna must be allowed to come back to Kenya unconditionally okay. and restrained. And Justice Odunga said, under no circumstances should you remove Mr. Meguna from the jurisdiction of the Republic of Kenya. So then, he still did so when I was unconscious. So then to cut it all short, your next flight that you are hoping to take will be back to Kenya? Uh, no, I think that is an insensitive question because I, I don't own a plane, I'm not a pilot, and I can't fly myself to Kenya. So I was brought here unconscious, I don't have any documents. I would need documents. I would need a guarantee that when I come, I will not be tortured. I will not be mistreated. I will not be, uh, I will not be hampered from accessing Kenya. Those are guarantees that must be given by the authorities wielding guns and disregarding court orders.